So the super zoom effect to pull off like a traditional and natural super zoom effect. You have an extreme like telephoto lens, for example, a uh, 13 to like 135 millimeter, 24 all the way to 300, like those type of lenses. You can also do this effect like how I did in post. And basically this is how you do it to shoot it. I use two lenses. I use the 35 millimeter telephoto zoom. I use the 70 to 200. You're picking a location, picking a subject that in the far distance from where you're standing you slap on the camera onto a tripod and do not move it whatsoever you're just switching the lenses so i started out the first recording with the 35 millimeter mine was more like a slow zoom so you have to try to align things in the best way possible because you can see errors of course if it's slowly zooming in knowing this i have about 30 seconds of shooting so with every single lens, the 35 millimeter, 70 millimeter, 200 millimeter, every single focal point, I recorded it for about 30 seconds. I'm shooting here in a field and my subject's all the way at the end and I'm using kind of the horizon line and making sure everything kind of matches up that they're in the same exact center as best as I can on location, right? And doing that, then you should have the right footage to work with in post. So let's jump into post. Now, essentially you have the clips. They're all kind of, you shot them, hopefully correctly and so this effect should work so now in premiere you want to stack the clips up on top of each other just think of this like a pancake right the tightest focal length which is going to be 200 is really going to be the only kind of subject that's going to be seen every other focal length and every other video clip under that it's basically going to be depending on how tight you shot it right or how close you got into everything under that is primarily for the environment around them in the beginning the most important thing is making sure everything aligns correctly so from the top down so the top layer that is going to be kind of like the tightest focal length so your 200 focal length and then the bottom layer is going to be your widest focal length in the beginning i'm really just matching everything up with the widest my widest shot so my subject is going to seem very very small and i'm going to scale him down whatever he looks like in the widest focal length so i'm just lowering the opacity and matching up the clips as as best as I can and then creating a circle mask over it and feathering it as best as I can to match the environment so it can just look as seamless as possible right after doing that I kind of pick how much I'm going to scale up it just makes it a lot easier to just jump straight to the end and pick however far I want to scale all these clips to how I determined that was I wanted to scale them up to a point where my 200 millimeter focal point is at 100% basically so it just takes up the whole frame as it should if I was just using that frame. So that's how far I'm really scaling this up to put a key frame into to whatever you determine the scale rate is going to end up at and then match them up again at the end as it's going through and as it's kind of scaling up, they all do it at the same rate. All you have to do is kind of go in between and fix any areas that maybe one clip not working as it should in other clips and then just going in and adjusting those keyframes. But just keep in mind, anytime you adjust one clip, you're gonna have to adjust all of them. So anytime you add a new keyframe into scale, um, into the mask, into anything, you have to do it for all four of them. Because I'm doing it for like a longer duration of time, I really, this is where I really have to spend a lot more time to make sure everything aligns together. Cause you can see a lot of errors um, with a longer duration. Usually when doing this effect, it's kind of shot pretty fast as you see in these type of examples that I got from eye candy they utilize it in a pretty fast way and even if you're doing it in post it's a lot easier to hide mistakes when it's like a faster faster zoom in like that right but with a slower pace utilizing it for 30 seconds I really have to spend some time to really tweak it you know what I mean so I did it with two different type of lenses but you could also do the same process for with just one lens is say I only use a 30 35 millimeter I could have picked a spot filmed it for 30 seconds and the farthest away walked however closer to my subject like a couple of paces maybe 50 feet filmed another clip and it kept doing that as however close I wanted to go but if you do it that way you're just gonna have a lot more clips to work with your four might turn into 10 your four might turn into 15 but it is doable you don't need to have multiple lenses or a telephoto lens and things like that that's a super zoom effect without a super zoom type of lens that you can do in Premiere Pro. Yeah, I loved how I 
it came out when I did it. It's gonna be a effect that's added into my arsenal that I'm gonna start doing a lot more. Go try it on your next project and stuff like that. Let me, show me how it went. You can get very creative with it. See you in the next one. Always stay safe, always do what you love, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.